Good morning, good morning. Welcome back. Pastor Seth with Daily Devotions here Saturday, January 21st. Glad you are here with me. I am back in the big state of Wisconsin, the cold state of Wisconsin, the snowy state of Wisconsin. I mean, we got, I came back to, like, snow. Indiana had no snow. None. Zero. Zip. Zilch. None. And it's northern Indiana. It's not like it's, you know, down by Kentucky or something. And uh, <coughs> uh, uh, what was I going to say? Blew my mind. Um, yeah, it was just, uh, it was kind of amazing. Why does this not look right? Click there. Um, no snow. And and uh, during the daytime, it was almost 40, you know? So for those who live in Wisconsin or the Northwoods like I do, 40 was like, well, I'm, I'm I'm not taking a coat. It's nice out. I don't I don't need a coat. Forty degrees. I'm only I'm only walking from my dorm room over to the commons. It ain't that hot, cold out. And, uh, but it did rain. Um, in fact, I think every day I was there was uh, overcast and rainy, uh, which is Fort Rain, Windiana, is what we used to call it when I was there, and they still call it that. So, you and up here in Wisconsin, we had snow. I'm I'm down there and no snow, and up here, Bonnie and Zan are putting up with uh, like eight inches. <clears throat> the Lee family came and cleaned out the driveway. That was nice. The the church's parking lot and and my driveway were all cleared out when I got home. That was nice. I was able to drive right into the garage, so that was good. And Bonnie got the sidewalk shoveled. We had a good time down there. Lots of good speakers. Um, the symposium is actually broken into two sections. One is exegetical, in other words, um, understanding something out of the scriptures or or discussing something out of the scriptures. Uh, that's um, that's. Uh, well, the, the first day we went to a meeting down at Redeemer, and we did Greek for all day, um, which was good, though. It was the pre-Lenten readings. But then Tuesday, Tuesday through noon on Wednesday is the exegetical conference, and they're they're reading out of the <clears throat> uh, reading out of the scriptures and dealing with uh, some some of the papers were contemporary issues, some of them were. Uh, theological issues, but out of the Bible, exegesis, reading out of the Bible. Uh, and then the, the from Wednesday noon till um, Friday morning uh, is the confessional conference, um, which, and these two conferences have been going on for like 40, 50 years. I mean, they're not something new. In fact, I think it's, I, I don't have the brochure. Um, I, I think it's one of them. I think it's like, I don't know, but, uh, but uh, over a hundred years. Uh, no, I can't. Can't be over 100 because Fort Wayne's only been a seminary since 76. And the, uh, well, anyway, the, the second one's confessional and it, and it deals with stuff out of the, uh, out of our, con our, looking at contemporary issues for the most part, but sometimes historical stuff uh, in light of our, con the confession of our faith in the Book of Concord uh, and again the scriptures. Um, and so, of course, uh, one of the big topics that was discussed during all of this was was this um, trend towards wokeism. There was a really good paper, not by a not by an ordained man, but by uh, uh, I believe it's Dr. Adam Francisco, uh, who teaches at one of our universities. And he's he's normally his thing is apologetics, um, defending the faith. Um, <clears throat> uh, which is how you know how you argue the faith with somebody, but this was uh, he was given a paper right on, on uh, wokeism, and he determined that wokeism is really a bad word because it doesn't define what we're talking about. It's it's uh, talking about many 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 other things. So um, what what the heck? I just got a text here. Yeah, okay. Um. Anyway, here we are. Good morning. Um, yeah, we had a good time. We uh, drove down and back with uh, two very good friends, uh, Pastor Searing and Pastor Jarabek. Pastor Jarabek, many of you met here with me um, uh, a couple of Fridays ago, uh, and so we had a we had a good time. So let's um, let's see who's here and uh, 
who's not. I think I just, the text I got was just from Pastor Jarabek, and I think he actually, the, the text was, yes, I am. I think he was trying to say that he's actually watching today. So uh, good morning. Uh, Ken, good morning to you. I'm going to see you guys pretty quick. Uh, Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you guys. Kathy, good morning. Uh, let's see here. Michael and Karen, rainy Saturday morning, 70s. I'm, Mike, I got like a foot and a half or two feet of snow out here. And it's, and it's, and it's uh, 19 degrees according to the weather service. And you have to go on about being rainy in 70. Why don't you put on some swim trunks and go walk in the rain? <clears throat> Love you, man. Hey, Karen, thanks for putting up with that guy. Uh, <clears throat> Jerry, good morning. Overcast skies, 34. No snow. <laughs> I can't say that. Well, there's no snow today. I don't know if we're supposed to get more or not. Verna, good morning. Linda and Keith, good morning. <clears throat> I'll walk while you talk. <laughs> All right. Good for you, Don. Linda. Good for you. That's uh, I was walking three miles at one point a year and a half ago. Maybe I should get that. Not, not maybe. I should get back on that. Jill and John, good morning. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, Renee, good morning. Uh, gray damp in Michigan. Well, yeah. Every day is a good day in the Lord. Debbie and uh, Grant, good morning, and Anne, good morning. Ashley, hello, hello. Um, that looks like everybody. I'm going to refresh my screen one more time because it is really acting goofy. I mean, if it was acting goofy before I left, uh, it's worse now. Um, in fact, when I went to start the broadcast, it didn't even tell me it was starting. It just, I had to refresh to find that out. All right. Yep. That looks like everybody. To those in the background, hello. Glad you're here with us. Those watching later, good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening. Um, glad you're taking a little time to uh, spend some time in God's Word. So, um, <clears throat> Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families. <clears throat> the Morning Order. I have that here in my Treasury of Daily Prayer. And I have my coffee right here. I've got that post-travel cold going on, I think. Stuffy. Or maybe it's just from being in Indiana. I remember my allergies were miserable in Indiana. So, all right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Our psalm today, Psalm 20, Psalm 20, the whole thing, all nine verses. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your salvation and in the name of our God set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven and with saving might of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, but we rise and stand upright. O oh Lord, save the king. May he answer us when we call. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Looks like I'm getting some jittering here in my signal on my satellite. It is Saturday morning, probably some lag, lags going on. Uh, mm. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. The name of the God of Jacob. The name of the Lord, right? 
Help from the sanctuary, support from Zion, remembering all your offerings, regarding your with favor your burnt sacrifices, granting your heart's desire and fulfill it. Well, you know, this is a this is a prayer for blessing, right? I think uh I mean this is this is a psalm from King David. Um but I I um I, I think this is a psalm, but the way it ends at least. Um I think this is Mm. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is a, a blessing for the king, um, but for the people who serve the king also, right? Um, so may the Lord answer you in the day of your trouble, spoken to the king. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you, spoken from the king or to the king. Uh, may he remember your offerings. May he grant you your heart's desire. May we shout for joy. Uh, over your salvation, uh, your victory. Uh, and in the name of our God, set up our banners, you know, uh, the, the declaration, declarations of the king. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. And, 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 and ending with, oh, Lord, save the king. Um, may he answer us when we call. Now the he, the, you know, and, one thing that's difficult with English is when you get a sentence like this, oh, Lord, save the king, may he answer us when we call. What does the he point to? Is it pointing to the king or is it pointing to the Lord? May he, oh, Lord, save the king. May he answer us when we call. Who's the he? The Lord? The king? Eh, could be both. Could be both. Right? If the people are speaking it, you're calling on the king to save you in your time of distress. But at the same time, it is the Lord who saves all of us. Right? So I'm going to go with the Lord. Uh, may the Lord save the king in his time of distress. May he answer. May the Lord answer us. Hear are our prayers uh, when we call. All right. That's so, you know, I forgot to put the the psalm number up there. There it is. There's Psalm 20. But we're done with that. So let's go on to our reading. We're going to start the book of Joel today. Book of Joel is kind of interesting. Joel, <clears throat> unlike some of the uh, uh, prophets, Joel doesn't. Um, what do I want to say? He doesn't. He doesn't come off as as angry or punitive when he's speaking to the people. He's kind and gentle in his words, um, but he warns them of the impending doom. Uh, that is coming, right? I mean, that's his job, to call Israel to repentance. There's some dispute over when um, Joel is speaking when it's written, but um, he speaks of uh, King uh, Jehoshaphat. Um, and so it's, a, it, it, it's, I think it's safe to assume or to understand that he's writing uh, around 900 B.C., um, and, uh, and and know that that's the time um, after the division of the kings by Re uh, kingdoms by Rehoboam and during the time of the kings, uh, 900, 957, somewhere in there. Um, but he's calling, and, and he, one of the key features is, is, is this, uh, 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 what do I want to say, this invasion of the locusts, the attack by locusts. And, and um, theologians and commentators have argued whether whether that's an actual plague of locusts uh, or if it's speaking of the Assyrian armies that are going to come down upon Israel um, and they, they come down like locusts. Because we have heard, where do we hear that? Was that in the beginning of, uh, was that in the beginning of Ezekiel or somewhere we've read of um of camel, or I have recently, right? of camels and and such coming down upon numbered like locusts in a in a field. I can't remember right now. Um, but we're the, the the argument is is this, is this uh, uh, locust or or the military attack? I'm going to go with this on the side of locusts here. Um, I am I, right, wrong, indifferent. That's where I am. Um, the Lord using locusts just like He did in in Egypt to call the people to repentance. What are what are locusts going to do? Well, they're going to destroy the crops in a region. Um, and, and 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 for you and I, um, if a crop suffers in a region, it really doesn't affect us anymore. Well, 
it might be look at eggs right the, uh, we, we there was some kind of issue with chickens earlier in in this well not this year last year late last year um, some say avian flu things like that um, but we lost a bunch of chickens and all of a sudden we're paying five bucks for a dozen eggs when really a dozen eggs should be like 90 cents to a buck 19 or something like that <clears throat> um, but normally when you have a when you have a calamity in an area like a freeze in, in uh, Florida or something like that, um, yeah, Florida citrus. If you have a freeze in Florida, the price of fruit goes up a little bit, but you don't you're not out of it. Um, but when you when you think about the times of Joel and the kings and things like that, what was in the region was critical to the food supply of the people in that region. So, uh, um, if if the locusts destroyed a crop in a region uh the people starved and uh, but today if a crop is destroyed in a region we just ship the food in from another place um, there might be an increase because of the distance or or the scarcity of the food but it pretty much overall doesn't affect us we're not we're not going to starve there's no threat of death uh before us because of those things so that's that's kind of um uh, kind of the way things are. Hey, Bob and Jeannie, good morning. Uh, so let's uh, let's get into this. Joel, chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, you elders. Give ear, all inhabitants of the land. Has such a thing happened in your days or in the days of your fathers? Tell of your Tell your children of it. And let your children tell their children, and their children tell another generation. When the cutting locust left, the swarm locust has eaten. The swarming locust has eaten. What the swarming locust left, the hopping locust e has eaten. And what the hopping locust left, the destroying locust has eaten. Awake, you drunkards, and weep, and wail, all you drinkers of wine, because of the sweet wine for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation has come up against my land, powerful and beyond number. Its teeth are lion's teeth, and it has the fangs of a lioness. It has laid waste to of my... <laughs> it has laid waste my vine and splintered my fig tree. It has stripped off the bark and thrown it down. Their branches are made white, Lament like a virgin wearing sackcloth for the bridegroom of her youth. The grain offering and the drink offering are cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests mourn the ministers of the Lord. The fields are destroyed. The ground mourns because the grain is destroyed. The wine dries up. The oil languishes. Be ashamed, O tillers of the soil. Wail, O vine dressers, for the wheat and the barley. Because the harvest of the field has perished. The vine dries up, the fig tree languishes, pomegranate, apple, palm. All the trees of the field are dried up, and gladness dries up from the children of man. Put on sackcloth and lament, O priests. Wail, O ministers of the altar. Go in, pass the night in sackcloth, O ministers of my God. Because grain offering and drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. Consecrate a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is near. And as destruction from the Almighty it comes, is not the food cut off before your eye, our eyes? Joy and gladness from the house of our God. The seed shrivels under the clods. The storehouses are desolate. The granaries are torn down. Because the grain has dried up, how the beasts groan. The herds of cattle are perplexed because there is no pasture for them. Even the flocks of sheep suffer. To you, O Lord, I call, for fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness and flame has burned all the trees of the field, even the beasts of the field plant, pant for you, because the water brooks are dried up, 
and fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> well, uh, what do you want me to say? There's judgment here. There's condemnation. There's suffering. Wake you a drunkards and weep. Wail all you drinkers of wine because the, of the sweet wine is cut off from your mouth. <clears throat> There's no question that during the time of the kings, Israel becomes very comfortable with its situation. And there's no, I don't, I don't, I didn't see, I didn't hear any talk of idolatry here or, or what the, what the sins of the people are that's, that, that um, perhaps the Lord is, is punishing here. Um, but simply that it comes, right? It's almost like, you know what you did. Uh, lament. The, the grain offering and the drink offerings are cut off from the house of the Lord because there's nothing to offer, right? Well, think about that for a minute. What do we offer to the Lord? What shall we render to the Lord? Um, what do we offer God? Well, our offering to him is from those things which he has given us. And and if this occurs in a region the way that it, it does here in the book of Joel, you know, what the cutting locust left, the swarming locust eats, what the swarming locust left, the, the hopping locust eats, what the hopping locust leaves, the destroying locust eats. So utter destruction, everything consumed. The leaves and even the bark stripped from the trees. That's, that's what it said here. Uh, it, it has laid waste my vine and splintered my fig tree, stripped off the bark and thrown it down. Their branches are made white. You know, if a plant loses all of its leaves in a, in a growing season, it may come back the next year, right? Um, when the season uh, turns from winter to summer, the leaves may sprout forth again if there was enough energy fed down into the roots of the plant that it could survive. It may even grow new leaves after the locusts have left. Um, probably not, but, but if the bark is stripped bare in the tree stands there naked and white, there is no hope. It is completely cut off. It's lost. New things must be planted. Um, and, and, and I know it's, uh, <clears throat> be ashamed, O tillers of the soil, whale, O vine dressers, for the wheat and the barley. Right? So the wheat, the, the prosperous crop, the rich crop, and the barley, the poor crop, the weak crop, the uh, the hard crop, the suffering, the crop of suffering, both are gone, right? Um, both are gone. So there, you know, not only is there the the prosperity of wheat taken away, but even the poverty of the barley is gone. And, you, know, you, you don't see loaves of barley bread around, right? You can make bread with barley, um, but you don't want to eat it. It's it's coarse and it's rough and it's it got a not a great taste. Um, Wheat gives you the tasty bread, and it's the bread of, of, of prosperity. But barley bread is the bread of poverty, and both of them have been taken away. The, the vine is dried up, the fig tree languishes, the, the pomegranate, the palm, the apple, all the fields are dried up, and gladness dries up from the children of man. Sorrow and lamenting. And so Joel calls them to put on sackcloth, the, the traditional clothing of, of, of repentance and sorrow lamenting right you put on sackcloth and cover yourself in ashes um, tells the ministers of the altar the priests to go in and in in sackcloth and stand before the altar all the night uh, passing the night in, in the sackcloth of repentance uh, because there's nothing else to offer but repentance the the the, the wheat the oil the fruit uh, the meat uh, it all has been the animal sacrifice, it all has been taken away. And there is nothing to offer before the altar of the Lord except repentance. I, I, I want to find Jesus here. Um, and, it, and it's kind of difficult. Um, I think it's, I think it's here. No, not there. Hmm. Um, 
Well, here, here's the thing, I guess. Let's, let's go here. Let's go here with this. Is this a good place to go? I don't know, but this is where I'm going. It is not the offerings of wheat and barley or oil and wine that God desires. Those are, those are given today in our offerings as a, as a um, confidence that he will continue to provide for us. Um, but what the Lord desires now is the offering of repentance, a contrite heart, um, and, and the understanding that in our repentance we've been forgiven. Uh, that, that that Christ has come to cleanse all sin uh, and and to make a new spirit within us, uh, to place within us a gladness that cannot be overshadowed and a, and a joy that we have in Christ alone. That joy is the promises of God fulfilled in Christ Jesus. That joy comes from knowing that though our trials in this world may be for a time, um, that's not a reason to uh, sorrow. For in the end, in the end, we have joy in Christ. And even in our dying, we have life. And that life leads us to the resurrection and eternal life. Not by the offerings we make, not even by the repentance that we bring before God but by the fulfillment of the promise that he gave us in Christ Jesus, the, the resurrection of the dead. Do you not know, Paul writes, that all of you who have been baptized into Christ have been baptized into his death? And if we have been baptized into a death like his, then we also are baptized into a resurrection like his. So even in the midst of suffering and sorrow and the loss of all things, even in the struggles we have today with the stuff that's going on in the world, we trust in what God has worked in us. And we call upon him to bring it to completion on the last day. That we might rejoice in him. Again, as Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Because in Christ we have nothing. Nothing to worry. Nothing to have anxiety in. We have joy in Christ. Because God sent him to die for you and to be raised from the dead for you, and to bring you that joy by his Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stop there for today. Let's go to our prayer of the day. Somewhere here. Ah, here we go. Let us pray. O oh Lord, grant us the Spirit to hear your word and to know the one thing needful. By your word and Spirit, we may live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue with the Apostles' Creed this day. Wait, we got to lubricate here. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> and for ourselves and others on this Saturday morning, Gracious Father, Caretaker of my soul and protector of my life, I come to you this morning, seeking your guidance for the day. I need you every moment as I go about my work or seek rec recreation. Let all I say and do give evidence of my loyalty to you and my devoted love for my Savior, 
who has redeemed me and brought me to faith as a member of his body, the church. Give me the courage to lift high the banner of the cross through the sincere profession of my faith and the high standard of my Christian life. Let my chief concern be to give of my time and thought and possessions to the building of your church. Permit nothing to keep me from worshiping you in your sanctuary tomorrow and confessing your son as my Savior and Lord. In your presence, let me find forgiveness and peace. Help me to put you in the very center of all my interests for the sake of my Redeemer, who died on the cross because he loved me. It is in his name I pray. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with those who suffer in body, mind, or soul, whether it be from the effects of age or illness or uh, injury. Grant them Strength, Lord, for the days, for this day and for the days beyond, especially this day we pray for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, Renee, and all those who call upon your most holy name. Lord, give them the strength that they need through your Son, who is even our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord God Almighty, Heavenly Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore, implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, it is good to be back. Yes, you... Oh, wait a minute. What button did I push there? It's good to be back. Glad to see all of you here with me today, and I'll be back again on Monday with our daily devotions, but tomorrow's Sunday. Find your way to church. Find your way to the sacrament. Find your way to the life that you've been given in Christ Jesus. By find your way, I mean get to church and <laughs> hear the word read and preached. God's peace be with you, and we'll see you back here on Monday morning.